So I was talking to Quentin, dude. We we smoked them yesterday. Like we caught like 50, 60 fish. Quentin lost himself a six pounder. Nice job, Quentin. Found a good line. All cranking, dude. All like reactions. I think we caught a few doing a few other little random things, but mainstay of the game was cranking. So I was talking to Quentin. I'm like, bro, you want to go out there and try to do this again? I think this bite is on, and we chase it. It doesn't last that long. It lasts a couple weeks, maybe just under a month. And when it's happening, you better take advantage, dude. So you down for it, dude? Yeah, let's do it to it, man. All right, so we're gonna go out. We're gonna go try to slash them on a crankbait. Show you a couple tips and do day two cranking Lake Gunnersville. Hit that like and subscribe button. Let's go, dude. All right. Oh dear, bro. Whoa, bro! We found the line, gentlemen. Oh. So Quentin didn't have the audio on for that first six pounder we caught. And I'm like, Quentin, bro, we're on him. And then we lost the line and we found this one. Oh God, don't do it, don't. Oh, she's got the old two-time pin right there. Whoa, 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 I got you. Gotta hold him by the belly. Give him the big spoon. That's a two-handed grab right there. Quinn, oh. we're gonna put this one on the scale, bro. Because uh, we're gonna have to estimate what that first one was and see uh, see where we we're at with, with two Piscatos. This one freaking got it, too, dude. dude. It is one nice thing with those six cents crankbaits is they come with those triple grips on them. And bro, they uh, they stick the bass. So we caught another donk donk or something, dude. <laughs> We're gonna throw around the bean counter, boys. See what we got. This one's a little smaller than the first one we caught without audio. Thank you, Quentin. But uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's see what we got. So check this out, Quentin. And I'm gonna want your honest opinion. So this fish is 507, dude. What do you think that last one was? She's gotta be just a little over six. I, I think she was, cause she had a lot more going on oh, yeah. in this quadrant, you know what I'm saying? Dude, a beautiful crankbait fish. I'm gonna throw in a well, take a couple pictures and get this thing released. So I want to tell you guys a little trick that I do when I'm launching these deep diving crankbaits. So what's the principle of deep diving crankbait fishing? One, getting down to the fish, right? You need this thing to dive to the peak depth it can achieve. Two, bottom contact. And three, covering as much, I guess, ground on the bottom, digging, you know, freaking Cadillacing around, diving around, digging that bottom and digging that trench as possible. And one thing I try to do, especially, you can see there's a slight chop, like maybe like six inches or so, maybe 10, 15 mile an hour. What I try to do, if possible, is I set the boat up in front of the fish. So there's a pile of freaking white bass, largemouth, all mixed in this, this giant pod, a school, if you will. And what I do is I set the boat up in front of it. I use my Lorentz and drop some waypoints so I can kind of have a direction. I use my point one to understand what direction my boat is pointed in. But to get the longest cast, obviously you cast with the wind, right? So if I set the boat up in front of these fish, I can use and leverage that wind to make an even longer cast, to cover more water, to get that bait down deeper and have it track on the bottom for a longer period of time. So it's just a little tip you can do. You gotta get comfortable with kind of your angles when you're casting. You gotta know exactly where they're set up behind you and how your boat is set up in front. A little geometry, but you know, you can handle it. But it really gives you a greater amount of efficiency. You can cover a lot more water and it's a lot easier to cast. Like this, this bomb heavy crankbait ain't so easy to cast into the wind, dude. And it slices in that. So if you can play the wind, leverage the wind and use it to elongate your cast, elongate your time on the bottom, you're just being more efficient and you are gonna catch more fish.
There we go, Quinn. That's a large mouth. Oh, but we have a problemo. That will help the cause, boys. Found the one. It's really been about getting outside of those white bass. So they ain't nearly as big as the other ones, but uh, that that'll go on the scale, boys. That'll go on the scale. Basically, what I've kind of figured out is, I I throw this crankbait, I catch 20 white bass, I figure out where the biggest concentration of white bass is, and then I try to throw just outside of it. It's something that I've talked to you guys about with long lining and that. And um, a lot of times the biggest bass in a school will be just outside, or if you have a school of bait, they'll be just outside of where you think, or based on your graph, where it really shows them to be. I think that's a white bass. Nope, it's another little large mouth. Come on. I got the line. Not a great big one, but she'll help the cause. We're gonna tank her too and just see what we can put together. But we got the line. I'm driving Quentin nuts because I'm making him jump around, but I gotta keep hitting this over and over again until it freaking stops out. So they're scooching over. I gotta aim over there. That was coming up, so it's most low. Oh, did you see the other one with him, dude? There was two. Bro, there was freaking two fish right next to each other. I almost had another double like the other day. He's still peeing. That fish was just on a bed, dude. Just on a bed. They bed like freaking late summer here too sometimes. All right, that's gonna be our limit fish. We're gonna throw in the well. I gotta go back to, there's little pods of them. I think I got another line on them. Yeah, that's her. I have to get the line. She's gonna do the jump of death. Oh God, she's gonna do it. I don't know how big this one is. Felt really big when I hooked it, but I think I got them on the side a little bit. But once again, it's all about that line. It's a pretty good one. Oh, she just lost a hook. Look out boys, we're doing it. Oh yeah. That's one of them short stocky ones, dude. That is a pretty one. That fish might actually be three and a half, four pounds, just based on that right there. We'll put her in the level and we're gonna hit this line again. Oh man. All right, my homies, we just had another flurry. They're not as big as that, that first set, dude. That six pounder that Quentin didn't quite get, which we're gonna have to add to the scale, dude. But we got a 507 and we got enough to fill out a limit. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're, we will let them go, but not yet. So we got some little guys. You're sticking your heads out, so. Okay, you wanna go first? This guy wants to go first. Just a nice little two, two and a half pounder. That's so angry. Come pop him on the scale. Making it, wow, wow, chill. Two and a half pounds, called it. So we'll pop him in, and he's going back down into the deeps. All right, we're gonna get number two out here. It's got a little higher back. She might go two and three quarters. Oh, she's short though. Not a real long one, that's okay. Yeah, two, actually, same amount, two, four, four. So pretty damn close. Once again, just like the other day, we're, we're putting together just a solid like starter limit. Probably end up around like 15 pounds or so. And then, um, and then the shenanigans are hopefully gonna start. That's when we go hunting some big ones. All right, let's get this guy. Pretty fun having four fish in the well, right? I bet you caught practically back to back. All right, this is what we're looking for. This is a 335. So we're gonna pop her 
into the thing. So we're gonna have 1338 on four fish. Just a, that's a beautiful stocky gunner tool bass right there. Get her back. And I think this might be the biggest one of all of them, but uh, we'll let the bean counter let us know if that's the case. Just a broad body. She's pretty close to the other one. She's got a big old head on her. All right, let's see what we got. I think it's pretty close, 337, 332. So we got the perfect starter gunner tool limit. We're coming in at, at right around 17 pounds, 16 and three quarters. Uh, that's a great way to get started out here. I think we're gonna keep using that crankbait. We might kind of thread in the spoon in that, but basically we're, we're trying to call out that two and a half, bump us up like two or three pounds. And actually what I totally forgot about is we already got a six pounder, bro. So if that's the case, so we minus that, that two, four, four, so six, that's three and a half pounds we gain. We're, we're at 20, 20 and change. So thank you once again, Quentin, for your articulate microphone skills, bro. <laughs> a little dap on there, great job. Everybody drop a little comment down there thanking Quentin for uh, being so detail oriented. But whatever, dude, there's tons of fish in this lake. We'll go try to catch a few more. So I should probably take a hint. I've had two fish eat my bait on the way up and I um, should probably pick something up that that maybe suspends hair jigs, spoon, that, that gets up in that water column. But I really do think these fish, that's a beautiful, you see how it's like finished with the iridescent? That's how those TVA fish look, dude. Absolutely gorgeous. Well, let her go. But there's one of two things happening. One, they're seeing the crankbait on the bottom, they're following it, not committing. And then when that crankbait's on the bottom, digging, digging, digging. And what it does is when you're on the bottom and you go to lift it, it changes its trajectory and does this kind of like flutter. I had it happen a lot down in Florida. I actually caught multiple 10 pounders. A day we caught 49 pounds. One of the tens that I caught was actually bringing the bait up. And I think it completely makes it like left turn, change that trajectory. And they're like, bro, this was my moment. You know, you're at the bar staring at that girl, like that's your moment. And, and that's what happens. So I'm a little tentative to pick something up that, that gets too high off the bottom. Cause I think even though these fish are eating it coming up, I think they're really bottom related. That might be. That's a good one. That's a great big one. As long as we got her in the face, boys. It's all about hooking them in the face. That's in the face. She only got one hook in the face. Uh, oh, I shouldn't have done that. But that right there is a, a GVO four pounder, boys. I'm putting together a little uh, a little satchel of pescados, if you will. Bro, just they're all getting that that last hook, but I think it's partially because I'm really, I mean I'm scooting this thing, dude. Look how precious she's so white. She just showed up, bro. So we've adjusted the scales to to reflect that six pounder that we caught first off, dude, when we first got out here. Uh, we're at 19.97. Let's see if this guy will help us call out. We gotta call out a 244. I think she's gonna do it. She's a, she's a sizable critter. So we'll grab her. Just in, in, post spawn, summer fish, looking to fatten up. Just a beautiful fish. And boy, did she tug, bro. She freaking took me for a ride. Yeah, that'll help. She's nearly four pounds coming in at three. Eight three, we're gonna pop her in. That'll bump us up like a pound and a quarter, and uh, that's gonna break us over twenty. That's gonna put us at twenty one three six. So that is where you want to be. Like be after a few hours out here. This lake is so absolutely good, dude. Like it, you can catch fifteen pounds at the drop of a hat, and then you're on to twenty. And then it's about your skills, about like searching out a couple big ones to really bump up. Let's get her release though.
So you know how you, you know you had a good cranking day? It's because you got one-eyed Sally right here. She lost an eyeball. And dude, the bill of your crankbait, I don't know, it lost about a 16th, an eighth of an inch. That thing is absolutely chawed down. We, we smoked them. The past couple of days have been absolutely amazing. We had a numbers day yesterday. Quentin even freaking lost like a five, six pounder. I let him cast on the line. He actually found a new line, dude, that we we're throwing to that school with. And today was was bigs, dude. Nothing giant, giant. We caught that one six pounder, but it came out with like 21 and change. Like just fun. It was so much fun, the way they load up on this crankbait. But I'll tell you what, it kind of highlights one of the misconceptions I had when I moved here. You know, I get up here, I want to throw a Nico rig, I want to throw a Carolina rig, drag a worm. I want to be finesse and to attack some of these early ledge season fish out on Gunnersville. And the reality is, dude, these fish are violent, they are aggressive, and if you're not feeding them a bait that captures those emotions, those kind of concepts, you're not catching fish, dude. These early fish, when they move out, they are just filled with rage. They're almost like spots, dude. And really aggressively fishing this crank, like getting them to react is 100% the key, dude. Like, I don't know if you guys paid attention, but I was cranking this thing, grinding, digging trenches in the bottom, and then I'm gonna sweep the rod. You know, I'm just tugging on it. I'm trying to get that bait as fast and as just intense as they're looking for it because they're either gonna bite it or not, but this time of year, dude, that's the way you catch them. Yet yeah, noodle dicking and doing all that, that dancey stuff, that's for like a month from now. This guy and being aggressive, being violent with it, that's for right now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video though. I had an absolute blast, dude. Grab yourself some crankbaits. Our setup was a six cents. Um, it's the C15, the Crush 15, I think it's called. We ran an SLX DC. Um, highly recommended if you're gonna be doing some cranking. Has that, that chip in it to control the brake, the centrifugal brake. Um, excellent for making those bomb casts because it's absolutely key to be bombing it out there, not only for the crankbait to track correctly, but also covering water. Ran a Lunker Sticks uh, 7.5 cranking rod, medium heavy, 12 pound cigar, red label fluorocarbon. Make sure you get some decent but affordable fluorocarbon because you're gonna be putting a lot on it. The reason being is in probably like a month or two, we're gonna be doing a lot of long lining as well. So you want a lot on there. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. We will see you back out of the water, hanging out, catching ledge fish, doing that summer fun stuff. Hit that like and subscribe button for me. Later, boys.